Happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate it. On this National Turkey Day, despite all the hardships we have all experienced this year and will be experiencing for the next who knows how long, I wanted to reduce some of that by talking about an interesting little critter from the last ice age many may not have known about. 10,000 years ago or so, the west coast was home to a completely unique species of turkey that probably made a good meal to prehistoric people and megafauna alike. Let's take a gander at what makes the Ice Age turkey, Meleagris californica, special. A common main entree dish on the table of most Thanksgiving dinners in the United States and during Canadian Thanksgiving is the humble domestic turkey, Meleagris gallopevo domesticus. Some people eat chicken or ham, but most go with the traditional turkey and save ham for Christmas. As you dig into your bird, a few nerdy things may pop out to you or will be brought to your attention by your annoying cousin. One is that birds are dinosaurs, their bones directly prove it. Another might be, what would a Thanksgiving dinner be like if you were eating a non-avian dinosaur instead? I tackled that question using Velociraptor as the example a few years ago. Finally, how did turkeys evolve? How long have they been around for? Are there giant prehistoric versions of the turkey like there seem to be with most animals alive today? These last few questions are what I plan to touch on here today. There are two species of turkey alive today. The wild turkey, Meleagris gallopevo, and the oscillated turkey of Central America, Meleagris ocellata. There are currently two known fossil species belonging to the Meleagris genus. The California turkey, Meleagris californica, and the southwestern or Bigfoot turkey, Meleagris crassipes. Before them were two other genera of turkey-like grouse, Regmenornis and Proagriocaris. Regmenornis is the oldest known true turkey, coming from lower Miocene rock units in Florida, meaning that turkeys can be dated back to around 20 million years ago. This Regmenornis proto-turkey was rather small with some skeletal traits similar to modern turkeys, other members of the grouse tribe, and the peafowl of Asia, species within the Pavo genus. However, since this was reported decades ago and DNA analyses have been conducted on the various birds within the greater Phasianinae subfamily since then, this may no longer be true. In a landmark 1980s paper, Ice Age paleontologist David Stedman found that modern Meleagris turkeys did share some ancestry with the extinct turkey genera, but also the peafowl genera and species. The next genus, Proagriocaris, diverged from Regmenornis during the end of the Pliocene epoch of Nebraska and was larger, being around the size of a modern sage grouse. These small turkeys survived into the Pleistocene when they diverged again, producing the Meleagris genus. The two modern turkeys, plus two extinct turkey species, Meleagris crassipes and Meleagris californica, diverged at various times throughout the Pleistocene, with the Californian Meleagris californica diverging from Meleagris gallopevo when they entered into wetter parts of California before being ecologically separated by very dry regions. In 1909, Ice Age paleontologist Loy Holmes Miller described a new species of bird from hundreds of fossils pulled from the asphalt beds of the Lancho La Brea tar pits of LA. Miller named the animal Pavo californicus, as he identified the animal as a fossil peacock, which is the genus Pavo. Then, having reanalyzed the bones, Miller decided to split the species into a new genus which he named Parapevo in 1916. It wasn't until 1980 that David Stedman reanalyzed the material applied to Parapevo californicus and found it to be too similar to the Meleagris genus, so he lumped it into the genus, resulting in Meleagris californica. Based on where their fossils are found, with or without the presence of fossils from the modern Meleagris Galpevo, scientists have hypothesized that the California turkey had a very limited range, from Orange County in the south through Los Angeles County to Santa Barbara County in the north. 
These birds were not as large as today's wild turkey, but it was generally more robust. It has a shorter, wider beak that it may have used to collect slightly harder foods than its eastern cousin. They must have been very common birds in the La Brea area as they are the second most common bird found in the tar pits, only outnumbered by the golden eagle. Their strong presence in the tar pits has also suggested to various scholars that these birds were particularly social. Aside from their numbers, which exceeds 700 individuals, the presence of a large number of young turkeys in the tar suggests that the site may have been a breeding ground for the birds, which would require some form of social behavior to make it all work. Why did these birds seem prone to being trapped in the tar? The 2006 work of Zbigniew Bohensky and Kenneth Campbell looked into this after a thorough analysis of the osteology and evolutionary history of these birds. They found that the very nature of the tar seams was one factor to the entrapment of the turkeys. Petroleum housing rock units far underground release their petroleum when the earth shifts and creates pathways for the liquid to rise to the surface. When the stuff oozes to the surface, but only as a shallow skin, most large animals can escape death when stuck. But no matter how deep it is, birds will always find it difficult to impossible to get out due to their feathers and lighter body. Like with the megafauna, this probability of death increases with a decrease in body size. Something that the authors point out is that the tar seeps are sneaky. The stuff flows better when it's warm. This means that it can be deadlier at different parts of the year, creating a more solid skin covered in debris during the winter, but a super sticky, fast-flowing carpet of death during the summer. What made it worse for turkeys is that they are large, heavy, gregarious, foraging ground birds. This meant that they were heavy enough to break any tar skin and become stuck, unlikely to escape by flying away as they tend to walk everywhere, forage for nuts, fruits, and bugs on the ground by moving the leaf litter with their feet, making them more likely to move debris off the seep and get stuck, and travel in flocks of several to several dozen individuals. This could also be why there were so many young birds in the traps, as a flocking of juveniles would have no way to know they shouldn't be anywhere near a tar seep. Plus, they flock in large numbers of juveniles surrounding a hen. If one baby gets trapped, the rest are gonna get trapped too, as they flock around the trapped baby as it slowly dies of dehydration along with the entirety of its brethren. A counter to the strong presence of young birds in the tar is that tar is an incredibly good fossilization medium. Perhaps there were just bunches of baby turkeys all over the place, and the tar happened to capture what their population was really like, rather than it being a special circumstance of baby murder. Kind of wild how it was just a huge killing field of turkey death. Based on the material collected so far, the California turkey went out with the Ice Age. They seemed to disappear from the fossil record around 10,000 years ago. The reasons for their extinction are the same seen with the North American megafauna, climate change, and humans. The end of the last glacial maximum, or ice age, saw a change in climate to far more aridity. This would have continuously shrunk the turkey habitat until it was gone altogether. The species of turkey seemed to prefer it moister, hence their small range in California. Some evidence suggests humans were in North America as long as 20,000 years ago, but stronger evidence for a permanent presence occurs 11,000 to 10,000 years ago as the turkeys go extinct. And as we know today, turkeys are damn tasty and relatively much easier to kill than a mammoth or camel. So, as you tear into your evening meal today, spare a thought to the humble prehistoric California turkey. They represent a long history of turkeys that conquered the forest floors of much of the United States. Too bad they didn't make the cut for National Mascot. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.